Okay, this story is incredible. This man, Howard Pittman, died. He had internal bleeding, literally died, and saw Satan's kingdom, saw the second heaven, and had a crazy, they say near-death experience, but I would say after-death experience. I'm gonna link the full video down below in the description. It's long, so we won't watch the whole thing. I'm gonna start from when he talks about the point he died going forward. You gotta watch this whole video through. He shares some incredible, incredible mysteries about the kingdom of darkness and about afterlife. Let's listen to this. 19 miles before we reached that hospital, I lost consciousness. I passed into a world of darkness. I mean, it was so dark that there's no words in the human language to describe crossing the veil. <clears throat> so he's talking about he just died. This is eight minutes into a f almost 40 minute video. I'll link it in the description. But he says he died and he crossed that veil, the veil that we're all gonna cross one day when we go from death to life. And I'm very interested in this veil that people talk about where they say they slip into outer darkness. So that's what he's describing here. But I passed out in this darkness. I felt, I really felt abandoned all alone. First time I'd ever experienced that kind of darkness. There was no light. And then all of a sudden I saw something that come right out of the top of that darkness. And it was like a, a, a tape that was just twirling around like this as it come down. You, you ever seen those confederate, confederate, confederate parades in New York where they throw that confederate out the window and just twirls down? That's what the thing looked like, a single one. And it came, and I watched it. It came all the way down right in front of me. I can't tell you how I saw it because I saw it with no light, no light at all. It's total darkness. But I saw this thing, just like this tape. It comes right in front of my eyes and turns just like that three times. And every time it turned, I'm reading it. It's a verse of scripture, Hebrew chapter 9, verse 27. It is appointed unto all men once wow. to die after this to judgment. It is appointed unto all men once to die after judgment. Three times that thing turned. And three times I read it. When I realized then, this was God's way of supernaturally revealing to me that I had met my appointed time to die. That is crazy. So he dies and he sees this thing. And it says it's appointed for every man to die once, then comes judgment. Three times he sees this, the scripture swirling in the air and he knows now he's dead and he's about to be judged, which is a chilling thought. I'm, I'm super interested in the afterlife and what happens after death. If you don't know, I have a bunch of videos on the topic, but this is so interesting that he dies and this is what he sees. We all know we got done. But you know, being human, we've dealt with that. We dealt with it in our subconscious. Actually, in reality, we look at death, physical death, it's something that happens to others. It don't happen to others. We just put it out of our mind and keep going. Wow. If it didn't, it drive us crazy. We just put it out of our mind and keep going. But when you come to the realization that it's not others, it's you, it takes on whole new perspective then. I didn't want to die. I left home to win an election, not to die. He was getting elected as the sheriff. That's what he was heading to, an election when he died, when he had this internal hemorrhaging, this bust in his back of his stomach, which caused him to die. To uh, die would be total defeat. So I prayed a very short and pointed prayer. I asked God to extend my life. I was familiar with the fact that he has a precedent in his word for extending life because he extended his kind's life for 15 years. And I knew that. So I asked him to extend my physical life. And then that's when I had the first ever supernatural encounter. Out of that vast darkness come the most beautiful voice I've ever heard in my life. There's no music created that would, would any way mimic the beauty of that sounding of that voice. As the voice spoke to me, the voice said to me, stop, no more pain, peace, rest, Security, all that you've ever wanted, just don't breathe. Wow. I'm breathing by willpower at that point. Every breath, it took all the strength I could get in, and when I got in the area, it took all the strength I had to get it out. I'm breathing by willpower. And he's telling me, stop, don't breathe. And my spirit was saying to me, listen, God's speaking. God's speaking. He said, don't breathe. And then I got to, I got to try to shut it down, what I'm doing. And then the realization hit me as though I screamed as loud as I could in my spirit. No, what am I doing? I just asked God to extend my life. Don't breathe, I'm going to die. You are not God. With that exclamation, Satan fled from me. So this- Well, so Satan came to him telling him not to breathe as he's asking voice, God to spare his life. You just asked the Lord to spare your life and a beautiful voice said, just let go. Yeah, but look what he said. 
listen, you say, Fancy, just what he said tells what I've been taught on my security. Security. That's what Baptists teach. Once you save, you save forever, no matter what. That's what they teach. Security. And he used that on me right away. The first thing he used, security, peace, rest. All you've ever wanted, just stop breathing. There in the valley of death at the door, he lied to me. He told me he was God. He couldn't kill me. So the devil, as he passed through that veil from death into the supernatural, into judgment, he has this encounter where the devil tells him, stop breathing, you'll get security, rest, peace, and literally just wants him to give up, and he's praying that God will give him more time as he's dying. Sounds like he's not fully dead, but he's in the transition of dying and passing that veil. He had to get me to kill myself. You better know the spirit that speaks to you. We're all going to come to that same place. I call it the veil. The veil is, is not in this world, and it's not in the other world. It's the door between the two. We all mm. got to go that way. So he says the veil is the door between, you know, this world and the next Christians world. Christians refer to it as crossing Jordan. It's when we pass from this life to the life to come. Once you cross that veil, flesh and blood can't cross it. It can't cross it. So that's when the angels took my spirit out of my body. And we went from darkness to light, just like that. Out of darkness into light. I'd crossed the veil. I was on the other side. The first thing they brought me to see was a ver verse of scripture being acted out like a stage play. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, against wow. principalities, word rule, powers, word rule, rulers of the darkness of the world, the menagerie of our enemy. There was this, looked like a long table with all these beings sitting around. The devil. So now he's seeing Satan's kingdom. He's seeing the second heaven where the war takes place. The Bible talks about our battle is not against flesh and blood. So he's now seeing, this is shocking, Satan's kingdom. He's seeing where the war takes place and all these principalities are seated, seated at a table. He sets it in. And all these spirits are princes that operate the principalities of the dark world. That's where the warfare plans for spiritual war is actually designed and planned. Satan. Wow. So they're all sitting at a table strategizing and planning. He does nothing without plan. He plans everything. Okay, I got to stop it one more time. He said Satan does nothing without planning. So Satan's planning. What are we doing? Are we planning? Are we strategizing? Are we evangelizing? Are we taking over for, God, for the glory of God? Satan is planning, he says. And sadly, the church is not planning. We're playing. Everything is planned. It's right down to the... Uh, so let me show you how it works. Every one of those people, uh, not people, spirits sitting at that table, head of principality. He has divided the world into principalities, territories. Over these territories, he puts a prince. Each prince is given as many demon spirits as he needs to carry out his plan for that principality. Wow. You take some continents might be one principality because there's no threat to the kingdom of darkness. Where there's no threat, no major threat to the kingdom of darkness, one prince could handle a whole continent, let's say. So he says at this table he saw principalities and now these demons are set over regions and areas. But America is many principalities. There's many threats. Even wow. down to an individual could be a principality, depending on what the threat is. But this is how that thing works. As I watched it, <clears throat> they let me see part of a plan that really shook me up because I knew about the plan. I call it a skeleton. It was just an outline. And it was the same identical outline that John was able to see. And he wrote about it in Revelation uh, chapter 13, beginning at verse 7. And this man went to be with the Lord. Well, I guess you'd say he died a second time. Um, he went to be with the Lord, I believe, last year, about a year and a half ago, the end of 2022. Through nine. And this really shook me up. Revelation. Listen to this. And, and if you're like, Isaiah, stop talking, just go watch I the original video that. in the description. You don't have to have me talking with it. And that. it was given unto him to make war with the saints and to overcome them. And power was given him over all kindreds, tongues, and nations. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him, whose names are not written in the book of the life of the Lamb, slain from the foundation of the world. If any man have an ear, let him hear. Revelation 13, 7 through 9. The master plan to capture the world, capture the church. That's why we've got cotton candy religion today. 
What is God telling you religion? How to act? Doctrines of demons, Paul called. Doctrines of demons are being expounded from the pulpits of so many churches today. He's captured the church, what he said he was going to do. And he's done it. <clears throat> he's already got it. When they brought me first, they let me see this guy. That's the first thing I saw was this outline. Uh, this outline. They let me see that. So John the Baptist wrote about it because I was very weak on spiritual warfare. I was Southern Baptist. You know, we didn't have too much teaching in that area. Then, in fact, I'd, I'd never heard but one sermon in my entire life that ever mentioned the devil. And uh, that was when I was 12 years old, and it scared the devil out of me. So that's when I first came to the church, you see. And then, no more. Even in the seminary, he was never mentioned. Didn't mention the devil, didn't mention the demons or anything. So he never heard of spiritual warfare. That's interesting. It was the ministry of the children that first opened my eyes as we brought these children into our home. Most of them had been used, misused, abused. Uh, for instance, the last girl, the last child they brought into our home. State rescued her that day. She was locked up in a cage with a cat. She's only 18 oh. months old, this little girl. And that, she, the only thing that they said that she'd had to eat for that solid week was the drop-ins of that cat. Oh. And that demon-possessed individual that had that little girl got his jollies off by putting his lighted cigarettes out on the bottom of her feet. You ought to see oh, her feet. Oh, sick. You see, these, this is not human. Demonic. Something beyond humanity had to do that. This is not human. And, and uh, it was those children, how they had been abused, misused, neglected, and all of them was crying for help. And they came to my house expecting me to help them, and I was the least prepared person in the world. I had no training in the spiritual war at all. I didn't even know. But as I looked at them, I knew that there was a force out there far greater than I knew about. And that's the wow. first thing God took me to see. See, when you see the depths of wickedness like he's talking about, you realize Demonic forces are real. Demonic forces are at work. When you see this in intense evil, torment and torture and, and abuse people go through, you realize how real the demonic realm is. And, th and that's what he saw. And God showed him Satan's kingdom and the warfare. He educated me quickly. He showed me how this is done by design, how spiritual war is done, and how they operate on two emotions in that world, hate and fear. They hate all humans and they fear their bones. There's no love. And that all, man, that's why he has... Hate and fear is how they operate, he says. Wow. Enforcer, enforcing the, the rules of the satanic world. It is a world without love. There's no love at all there. It is operated by fear and hate. They hate all humans and they fear their boss. They fear him. Now, <clears throat> people don't pay any attention to this. But Satan, show you how devious he is, took one-third of the angels of heaven with him in his rebellion. What did that tell you? When you think about this, there's no dummies in the angel court. And yet he deceived one-third of the angels. Wow, that's interesting. He said there's no dummies in the army of angels, in the angel court. There's no dumb angels, yet Satan was able to deceive, I never thought of that, one-third of the angels. And again, no dumb angels that God's created so how tricky and sly how Satan did he do is. It? This tells about his ability. Second Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4 says he's the God of this world. That word God is not a name. It's title. It's translated, translated from the Greek word theos, from which we get our word theology. The definition of English, English in English is divine ruling magistrate high potentate. Think about that. That's his title. Divine means set apart, put above. Ruling magistrate. Who is a ruling magistrate? one that has authority by law to control the conduct of those under his jurisdiction. That's why Satan says, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 25, verse 26, he can take any lost person at will. He's a divine ruling magistrate. Not long ago, I had a lawyer call me from New York. He says, I have a, a man up here charged with murder. He's got a copy of your book, Demons and Eyewitness Account. It says in that, the devil can make people do what he wants. He wants you to come up here and testify that the devil made him do it. I said, well, I, if you send me a subpoena, I'll come up here and testify what the Bible says. Wow. Just what I wrote is what it says. He says, okay. Two weeks later, he called me back. He says, I said, he said, I'll get the subpoena. Two weeks later, he called me back and said, the judge, get out of here, man. I ain't opening that kind of worms in this court. So. <laughs> but <clears throat> he let me see the God of this world at work. And he is a God. All them people out there are serving him and they don't know it. They don't wow. know it. The strongest one are his princes. They're at the top. They're from the giant 
warring order of demons. They, they, they were actually, actually uh, uh, a- angels who, who fell with him. And uh, angels are, you know, they got some angels that look like animals, some that look like birds. They're, they're all described in the Bible. And uh, they got the, the guardian angel looks just like a human being. And this is why We're going to listen to how he that. goes to the gates of heaven, I mean, and then we'll, uh, I'll give you my thoughts. When you, deal with, when you deal with strangers, be careful. Many times you deal with angels unaware. Now, Brother Howard, you, you good works. You took in abused children. Uh, you were a police officer. You served. But something happened where he said your works weren't acceptable to him. Yes. He says, um, well, when, 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 when I stood before him to plead my case, see, the angels brought me there to plead my case. So now he's standing before God. So he saw the spiritual warfare. He saw the devil and this table of principalities, how they rule in the spiritual realm and spiritual warfare. Now he's standing before God. I, all the time case. I kept asking him, is he going to let me live? I knew that my spirit had been crossed, had crossed the veil. Flesh and blood can't go there. And I knew the only way I could come back, God would have to permit it. And I kept asking the angels every time. I, I still, no matter what I saw, I still was in love with this old piece of clay. And so they brought me there and let me plead. Brought me to the gate. They wouldn't let me. I didn't go in. I came to the gates of the third heaven. And, and they, they told me, I watched 50 saints being per- permitted to enter the gates of heaven. But they didn't let me go in. They said, they, they, they stopped me. The angel stopped me there and says, well, I got to the gate. And he says, if you go in, you can't come out. You got to stay till he brings you back. I said, if I can't come out, then that means my phys- physical life is over. And you told me I could ask him. Angel said, you can't ask him. But you stand outside this gate and ask him. And so I did. I came. Wow. So he's outside the gate of heaven. The angel says, you can't go in and ask him, but you can ask him to go back right here at the gate. I, 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 I was allowed to plead my case. So and I was, uh, my, I was, I was pleading until God I couldn't see. But I knew it was total silence while I pled my case. I was telling him, all, I reminded him of all my good works. I told him about all the things that I'd done, all the things. That, that's what I was basing on, on my, my good works. I told him about all of that. <clears throat> and when, when I, he was, never said a word till I finished. When I finished, then he answered me in a voice that sounded like thunder. It wasn't anything like the voice that Satan had used on him. He says, he started, I'm going to try to quote verbatim exactly what he says. Your faith is dead. Your wow. works are in vain. The life that you lived and offered to me as a life of Christian service is an abomination that I rejected in the Pharisee. What made you think I would accept it from a Laodicean-type Christian? In fact, untold millions are living the same kind of life that you live, and they stand in danger of my everlasting wrath, unquote the living God. I couldn't believe he was talking to me. I'm a preacher. I'm a teacher. I just told Some of you need to replay that and listen to that again. He literally said your your faith, your works, they're all dead. You're lukewarm. told him about all my good works, what I've done, you know. Oh, that's and, scary. And I said, no, Lord, don't you wait, you don't understand. He said, You didn't do those works for me. You did them for a false god. Wow. I said, Lord, I worked for you. I called you Lord every day. Yes, you did, but you never made me Lord. What a difference. To call him Lord gives him a title. To make him Lord promotes him to ruler of life. Who is your Lord? But Lord, Ooh. I was serving you. No, you wasn't. You served a false god. Then he named him. Satan's number one selling false god, S-E-L-F, instantly. Wow, I self. knew everything he said was true. Had he reached down and picked me up and dropped me in hell, I would have said amen. But I couldn't move. I'm laying on my face spirit in the spirit. I couldn't move. I couldn't move. They came and angels came and took me away. They took me out and let me regain my composure and brought me back and let me plead the second time. Second time, I never opened my mouth. Then he began to talk to me in a compassionate tone. As it said to me, suddenly I realized this is my father and I heard him. He was hurting for me. The God that created all of this was hurting for me. The smallest insignificant piece of flesh that he had, he was hurting for me. Nothing mattered now. I didn't ask him for my life. I didn't ask him for anything else. But when this life meant nothing, he gave it back. Sent me back to do what I'd done. Pay, give me a five-point message for the church and give me place two restrictions on Restriction one was that I was not to ask anybody to hear this because he was sending me to his church. I didn't know what, it, what was his church. But Wow, what a story. What a story. I want to hear your guys' thoughts down in the comments. I'm going to link this entire video. It's 40 minutes long. 
Howard Pittman dies. God shows him Satan's kingdom, the way Satan functions. And then God basically says, depart from me. Your works are dead. Your faith is dead. Um, you're lukewarm. You're Laodicean Christian. And he said, but God, I did all this stuff. I preached for you. I did these things. And God said, no, it was all for self. You did it for the God of self. Ugh, it gives me chills. That is such a strong message. What a story I wanted to cover on the channel. I'll link his full video down below so you guys can go give them credit for it. He passed away, I believe, a year, a year and a half ago. This is serious stuff. When people die and have these experiences, we shouldn't just throw them off or ignore them. We should realize this is, we're all going to face God. We're all going to stand before God in judgment. Let me know what you guys think down below. We're live every Monday night, Tuesday night, and Thursday at noon. Also, we're doing weekly prayer meetings with our monthly partners. So hit join on YouTube and become a member or join partnership on the website. It helps so tremendously. Love and appreciate you guys. And we'll see you in the next video. Man, that was strong.